Hi, Shira7. I'm back with Diaries of a Former Mortician. Yes, part four. We are ready for some gruesome stories because I got some for you today. Yes, gruesome. Okay, well, just gross. So, the first gruesome story is going to be about a man that was found decomposed. Okay, so. The funeral home gets a call from the medical examiner's office saying that a family would like you to come pick up the body of their deceased. So we need to inform you that the deceased was found two weeks after he had passed in an apartment with no air conditioner in the summertime. Okay, so you know something is not right. It stinks. It's going to stink, right? So and this is Houston, Texas, and it's hot and humid, and there's bugs everywhere. So um, I didn't go to the medical examiner's office to, you know, remove the body and bring it to the funeral home. I stayed at the funeral home. But when the people that went to go retrieve the body came back, and what, I was like, where's the body? And they're like, uh, it's in the garage. I'm like, why are y'all put it in the garage? Why? Aren't we going to embalm the body? I'm new, okay? So, I don't know any better. Um, and so, they're like, well, it's the body is so decomposed that we can't embalm it. I'm like, what? I had never seen a body that decomposed. So, I'm like, oh, I want to see. I want to see. So, I grab my gloves and everything. And I go out to the garage. Before I can even see a body, I open the, the garage door. I just, there's a stench in the air that's just so strong that it automatically makes me gag. And I'm like, Oh my God, what is that smell? And so they told me, oh, that's putrescine. That's a chemical that the body creates when it decomposes. And it automa automatically makes you gag. Even if you're used to it and you've been around it for years and years and years, you will still gag because it's a chemical reaction. So I'm like, okay, um, what do I do? So they like, get some Vicks vapor rub and put it under your nose. That will help you. So I rub that stuff under there. Go in, take a closer look get my flashlight because it's dark in there right I know scary stuff right okay so the guy it's obviously not uh, African American because his hair is like really straight right but his skin tone his skin color is like this color black okay like black and looks like you know like a horror story like a horror movie like those zombies look um, they're all black and gray and like stuff oozing out of them that's what it looks like so um i go in like i have my gloves on to touch the arm and they're like no 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 don't grab the arm i'm like why not you want all that meat to fall off of this bone if it's gonna have skin slip and i'm like what's skin slip they were like skin slip is where you you know when you grab someone that's been decomposed so long it's like all the the flesh and the, the skin will like fall off his bones into like a soup and i'm like oh i don't want to i don't want to do that i don't want to do that so then I'm like trying to get a closer look at the you know at the face to see what it looks like if all the eyeballs are gone and the nose and stuff like the nose have been sunken in like this it starts to look skeletal and the lips were like the color it was like black little worms that had like been half eaten off there was maggots like all over his mouth so I'm trying to look at the maggots and stuff and like I get in really close with my flashlight and all of a sudden, oh my God, a cockroach crawls out of his mouth. I mean, oh my God, I jumped so far. I screamed so loud. I'm like, ah. I mean, I'm not scared of dead bodies. I'm not scared of anything but roaches, just roaches, okay? You can rob me with a roach. You can you you can steal my car, carjack me. Just hold up a roach, a cockroach. So so basically, I was scared of the roach and not the body. That's pretty sad. So and the smell, I have to I have to describe the smell to y'all. Okay, y'all have to know what this smell smells like. Okay, if you've never smelled a decomposed dead body, you're not missing anything. Okay, this smells like okay vomit feces urine and rotten dead fish all mixed together that's what it smells like 
okay if you ever ever were curious about how that smells that's how that smells and it does not come off your clothes like if you've been around a decomposing body you have to throw those clothes away because the smell is like a chemical and it will not come out so you're going to have to ditch those clothes I, I, I tried to save mine like a jacket I took it home and my whole room smelled like that body I'm serious I had to go through that in the trash and it was a nice jacket and I was so upset but that's you know it comes with the territory so if you ever if you're a mortician or thinking about becoming one if you ever have to go pick up a decomposed body like don't wear your nice clothes okay get something cheap or something you keep in your car or just be prepared to lose a nice jacket <laughs> because I had to throw mine out seriously okay my next story is about um, it's not so gruesome but it's gory okay so this this person had been missing for like a month and you know he was nowhere to be found they had a you know missing posters his family was looking for him and like a month later you know there's some remains that they call them human remains found in a, a field in summertime in Texas and they take you know they call the medical examiner's office to come you know the coroner and the medical examiner's office to come and you know investigate and, you know clear the scene so there was like some clothing around the the remains and so they had the identification so they called the family and they were like uh we found if we found your son and he's you know deceased so of course they're crying da, da, da. They're like, well, which funeral home would you like us, you know, to release him to? So they released him to our funeral home. And they send me to pick up the body. I'm like, me by myself? Okay, I'll go. And I went, and I go to the medical examiner's office, and they're like, okay, here's the body. And they're holding up a bag, like a garbage bag. I'm like, what is this? Oh, this is the body. Um, it's just bones. That's all that was left, bones and the, here's the clothes so they gave me a bag of clothes and belongings and a bag of bones I'm like uh, and then they like realized that uh, I didn't know why I had a bag of bones in my hand so they were like well he decomposed the animals ate him up you know was in a wild I mean was in a field out in the wild he got eaten up by animals oh this is all that was left okay and the sun bleached his bones because he had been out there for too long so, and you know this field was right very close to the funeral home actually I guess that was his neighborhood so I get back to the funeral home I said okay um I have the body in a bag and he's like what and he was kind of upset because <laughs> okay y'all know a lot of funeral directors are uh, money hungry right he was upset because he couldn't make the money off you know embalming and all that kind of good stuff and so he was like okay well they already you know prepaid for a, a casket they already bought a casket so just go lay the bones in the casket I'm like hmm so I go in there I got a bag of bones I gotta put a skeleton puzzle together in a casket so I'm like okay here it goes here then I start singing that song the knee bone connected to the shin bone and that's how I put it together seriously y'all don't I, t I was in mortuary school but <laughs> they don't prepare you for stuff like that okay they don't tell you how to put a skeleton back together so I had to sing that song see everything you need really need to know you learn in the kindergarten I'm not I'm, I'm just kidding <laughs> but I really did have to sing that song seriously so after singing that song I put the little skeleton together <laughs> and the family had come to the funeral home to you know view the body and my uh, my boss had to tell him uh, ma'am we suggest you have a closed casket because there's nothing to view so she didn't understand what that mean and she's like well I want to see my son and so he was like ma'am there's nothing left but bones and she's like I don't believe it I want to see it so when there's something that gruesome we don't allow family members to see that unless they sign an affidavit you know not not because you know only because of legal reasons like if they faint or have a heart attack they can't blame the funeral home and try to sue the funeral home so we have them sign an affidavit you know whatever your reaction is to seeing this body is you know not our responsibility so she signs the little affidavit and then he says okay go show her the body and I'm like me always giving me the dirty work I know 
So I go. I open the casket. And all she sees is the skull on the pillow and like these bones scattered around and she just she just loses it and faints. Oh and like all her other family that's with her, you know, they try to revive her and get her up. She gets up after a while and I, and he was like, Oh, I told you there was nothing much to see. Um, I tried to tell you. And she was like, Well, that's all that was left of him? What happened to his body? So <laughs> Can you imagine explaining to someone, someone's mother that animals ate their son's body in a field? Okay. That's what we have to go through. So after she was, they like took her home and sedated her and gave her some drugs and told her to go to sleep. Okay. So that was pretty gruesome. Okay. Another, my, one of my other stories, it's not so gruesome, but it's kind of sad. Okay. This is the first uh, body I embalmed. It was a 20 year old African American girl who had been shot like in the head right here and dumped in a dumpster so well, I got the body and I was like um so what happened you know I always want to know the backstory so my boss was like um she was shot in the head by her boyfriend and dumped in the dumpster but he felt so guilty about it he called the police and turned himself in and told where the body was I'm like well why would he do that if he was gonna kill her why did he kill her so he was like, well, it says that she has HIV and AIDS. So uh, he must have found out that she gave him, you know, HIV and he was upset about that and killed her. And then he felt bad about it afterwards and he turned himself in. I'm like, okay, okay, wow, interesting, you know. So, man, there's so many stories that, you know, lead to death these days. Okay, I have another story. Okay, this is a gruesome one. So this guy is a white guy. He decides to commit suicide. And I guess he didn't have any other weapon except for a shotgun. Because he uses a shotgun and shoots himself in the face. Okay? So he shoots himself in the face and I'm like, when we get the body, I'm like, well, how are we supposed to fix this, you know? The bone is gone. You know, half the skull is, is gone. What are we supposed to do? So, my funeral director hands me an empty bottle of bleach. <laughs> I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? And he's like, well, do you see how the bottle of bleach is curved, like the top of the skull, like right here on the forehead? Well, you need to cut that same size out of this bleach bottle and glue it to his skull where you can glue it and then put wax and stuff on top and then put makeup on it. Because in funeral directing school and in mortuary school, they teach you how to reconstruct a human face with this special wax, right, and makeup. But they don't teach you how to use bleach bottles. They just tell you to improvise with whatever's around, okay? So I'm, like, cutting out this bleach bottle and gluing it to this man's skull and waxing him up, putting wax all over him, like, you know, the, the kind of wax that they use for wax figures. And like his nose is gone, so I have to reconstruct his nose. I'm like, well, what this dude's nose look like? I don't know. And they didn't have a picture. So they, he just said, well, just just make one up. I'm like, really? You don't have a picture? He's like, no, we don't have a picture. So you know. It's like, well, you look good with a nose like MJ. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just made just like a normal looking nose. I guess it was probably closer to mine, but I, I try to like make it more pointy. Because it looked like he would have had a pointy nose. I don't know. So I had to make like this wax nose. You know on the table next to him. And then like stick it back on. And like smooth it out like Play-Doh and stuff. And. It came out pretty good you know. I was proud of myself. That was a good job. But like when you shoot yourself. Like all of this is open you can see all your cavity your brain like half his brain was out like I had to like throw half of his brains away because not away but like in the medical waste container because it was just like oozing out and I couldn't do anything with it and like all his teeth were gone I had to put like a dental plate in his mouth like or something like this to give him form his eyeballs were gone and so they have like these plastic uh, they look like contact lenses with like grips on them and you just stick them inside the eye and it like keeps the eyelid shut so yeah I would have to like totally redo him and um, 
Like if y'all ever want me to go through the embalming process, I probably will. It's 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 a little gruesome. It's a little gruesome. Like if uh, I think people would want cremation more if they knew the embalming process. That's why I'm getting cremated. Okay. It's the most violating thing that can ever happen to you as a person. Anyway. Okay, so I have one more story. Um, the last story I have is, okay, it was an 18-year-old, 18-year-old teenager who hung himself in a stairwell of a youth community center or something like that. I don't know. And, like, when you get this person's, like, death certificate or to type up, like, the family has to write down everything before you make it into a death certificate. So they put his occupation was a counselor. I'm like, he's a counselor at 18. Uh, he was a, a youth counselor. And so he was like Middle Eastern and uh, probably Muslim. And they found him hanging in the stairwell like he had committed suicide. And I was looking at because they gave a lot of pictures for the program and all that kind of stuff. I was looking at it and I think, you know, I think that he killed himself because I think he was gay and I think he was in the closet and I think that he was too ashamed of the shame that it would bring on his family so he killed himself sort of like an honor killing because like his family were like very strict devout Muslims and they did not believe in homosexuality and I believe that he was gay because in a lot of those pictures that he was like really close to one of the guys in the pictures and they just looked like you know they, they had more than a friendship so I think he killed himself to avoid bringing shame upon his family and his family they were sad and they were crying and there was a lot of people at his funeral but they didn't understand why that he killed himself but the I was I watched people I was looking at the father I was looking at the father the father just looked so mad he was like okay that's my ugly face like he knew why he killed himself he knew he knew that he killed himself to save the family's honor but he lost the son still in the same so it's like you your culture your belief and all of that stuff has a lot to do with your mourning as well so I am going to close this vlog out and if you have any questions let me know comment rate subscribe all right bye bye